Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Star Trek versus Transformers. That's right, versus. Now, I looked at this as just a stupid cash grab. Then I actually got the book. Damn! <laughs> I might actually get the physical copy of this. Comixology just ain't going to do it for me this time, bud. This was actually really good. Let's talk about who made this book first. Okay, so... Star Trek vs. The Transformers, written by John Barber and Mike Johnson, art by Philip Murphy, colors by Priscilla Tramontano, Tramontano. we're going to go with that, sorry if I butchered your name Priscilla, uh, letters by Christina Meiser, and uh, yeah, this was surprisingly good, the book didn't have any right being this damn good, first off, this is like the old Star Trek cartoon. I don't know if you guys remember that or if you've ever seen that. I'm sure they've shown it before. Just I remember actually watching it. It was on syndication reruns. I think it was Nickelodeon. I was a kid. What Was there even a... Yeah, there was a Nickelodeon at the time. I used to watch like... Um, what was the name? You Can't Do That on Television and Double Dare and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure the show was on Nickelodeon. So anyway... Um, I don't remember this little lion chick. She's a hottie. Um, what's her, uh, Mares? Mares? She purrs all the time. It's like, dude, I got a cat. I love my little cat. She's a beautiful little girl. And she don't purr when she's scared or, or angry or whatever. She only purrs when she's happy. And, like, these people are being shot at and she's all just like, purr. It's like, dude, what do you, it's like the fakest part of this whole entire book. Anyway. Some kind of mining operation. They detected Klingon activity. They go down there, but they don't, they don't notice any life signs until they actually get to the surface. And there's a freaking war going on because they didn't know how to calibrate their sensors to see robotic life because they're actually alive. The Transformers. So they're batting it out, shooting at each other and everything like that. Like, dude, what the frick is going on? By the way, pretty much, if I can think of it, full spoil spoilers for this issue because I want you to actually go out and grab this comic book. This was so much fun. Uh, no no spoilers for the other three books, which I will absolutely be reading. Holy crap. Um, anyway, so yeah, spoilers, warning, done. Um, these guys are sitting there fighting each other and whatnot, and they're trying to get to the mine, and there's the, there's the all it is is just the, uh, the, the, the Decepticons, and they're flying around shooting at everything, and Kirk and his crew are like, dude, I got no idea what, what's happening here. And this really felt like I was watching that old cartoon back in the day with like, what was it? 80% of it was was um, restocked footage. <laughs> they, they would have a couple of extra scenes, but if it wasn't 80%, then it was 95%. Almost everything on there was just the same footage they were using over and over and over again. Um, but here, obviously, it was very different. And again, that lion chick, what's up? Black Arachnia was in this. Uh, Black Arachnid was her name? I think Black Arachnia. She's actually modified to a G1 appearance, which is interesting. So she's got a helicopter transformation. Like, what? <laughs> That's kind of freaking cool. I dug that. Um, the, the, the Decepticons have to retreat because all of a sudden Optimus Prime shows up and it's like, oh, look at this. But Kirk winds up taking out Prime. Oh, that's right. I said it. Prime dies, but hands over the Matrix of Leadership to Kirk. You believe me. You believed me on that. Well, that didn't actually happen. Prime didn't die. Kirk did take out Prime. It just it was a perfectly well-placed shot, whatever. It's easy to target these flying jets and whatnot. But Prime is just laying there. He falls unconscious. He's trying to protect the humans, but he can't. Anyway, uh, the miners are able to get away. And the, the, the Decepticons are like, ooh, Prime is down. Let's kill these humans and see what we're going to do about this place. But all of a sudden, reinforcements come in in the form of the other Transformers? No, because that's just standard. The Enterprise fires a beam down and takes out a whole bunch of people. Like, Stoundwave is laying there like, uh, Yo, I got jacked up. <laughs> Rumble, Frenzy, Laserbeak, Ravage, Buzzsaw, Ratbat, get me out of here. Like, he, he got jacked up, dude. Transform. <laughs> Eject, eject. Um, so anyway, they leave. And when they go around the other side of the planet, they see Trypticon. Holy crap, Trypticon. I haven't seen Trypticon in the comics in a while. But I also don't read the, the Transformers comics that much because they're just too confusing at this point. Too many Transformers, I don't know. I'm a G1 kind of guy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I got some G2. I got some G2. It's all the other stuff that's crazy. Even the Beast Wars. Like, dude, I, I watched some of it. <laughs> But uh, that wasn't my Transformers. And I was more of the original, you know, you guys know, more of the original Marvel comic book. I got a spotlight on story coming up for the original four issues of um, the Transformers. That'll be up soon. But 
But while we're here, um, at at Trypticon, the Klingons took over. What? So Megatron makes a, a sort of alliance, you know, his alliances work with the Klingons. And they're all like, we going to take everybody out. We'll see. We'll see. In the meantime, Bones gets his, his statement. He wasn't upset enough about being forced to beam down because he hated beaming down. Hates the transporters because he knows what, exactly what's happening. You're scattering my molecules all over the place and bringing new molecules together, um, assuming that it's going to be my consciousness that's reformed. But it's not really me anymore. I'm dying when I go through there. So he knows what that is. He knows what that is. So anyway, it's all about the mission, man. <laughs> so, um, what do you call it? These guys... Uh, these guys are all going to wind up fighting each other at some point, but Bones winds up saying, like, you know, damn it, Jim, I'm a, I'm a doctor, not a mechanic. <laughs> so, I like that. They had pretty much all the tropes in here. Oh, and they do find the rest of the Autobots. They were, like, hidden away somehow. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. Maybe Metroplex is down there. There's some kind, maybe it's Fortress Maximus. Fortress Maximus versus Trypticon would be interesting. I don't know if we ever saw that before. I never saw that in the comics before. It's always Scorponok and Fortress Maximus or Trypticon and Megatron, uh, Mega Megatron, Metroplex, um, and Devastator versus Omega Supreme. And then, you know, Superion, Menasaur. They, they, they gather specified enemies, you know? But I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit of, you know, oh, I'm going to take you on, bring it on. Like, I, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would read that. This was a good comic book. <laughs> Seriously, this comic book had me tripping because I genuinely expected to read this and just, uh, you know, I'm not going to trash all over a comic book, but I was just going to stay straight. Like, dude, this is a clear cash grab. It's it's a money grab, whatever. But this isn't, they're not taking this seriously. All right. They're not actually trying to take this seriously. They're using the old cartoon versions of these uh, Star Trek characters. I can't find any fault in what's happening in this book. Did I went in with such low expectations? I did not expect to come out of this smiling. I'm cheesing. How am I cheesing this much? This was a good comic book. I'm recommending it. I'm recommending it. That's it. That's it. You get it or you won't. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.